Okay, hey guys, what's going on? It's Caddy here and I actually just finished watching one of my favorite movies of all time, The Wiz. Have you guys seen The Wiz, the movie The Wiz? Unless you lived under a rock, I'm sure you know or have heard of or have a friend that can put you on to the joyous, joyous wonders of the movie The Wiz. The Wiz is the quote unquote black version of The Wizard of Oz, which I happen to not think that it really is that because after watching it as an adult person, I got so much out of it, more so than I ever got from the original with Judy Garland. I love that one, don't get me wrong. I It's a classic, it's a timeless classic, but there is just something about watching things as an adult versus when you watch things when you were a kid. Now, I do not remember the last time when I watched The Wiz. I honestly want to say that it was probably a very, very long time ago. I'm not sure if it was in my teens or what have you, but watching it this time really changed me, guys. It really got me feeling so moved that I thought I had to come up here and do a crochet show with you guys just to talk about it. So without further ado, let's get into The Wiz, guys. He's the whiz and he lives in Oz. Da -da 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 -da. You guys know that? Like, oh my God. So first of all, iconic. This movie features some of your great, great, great people from black film. First off, we have none other than Motown's finest queen, Diana Ross, Diana Ross the boss playing Dorothy. Oh my God. This was like the emotions behind her portrayal of Dorothy. Just, you could tell it hit home so much. So if Diana Ross had a YouTube channel back then, she probably would have made a video like me right now. Because after watching that movie, I honestly feel like Dorothy. Like I feel like Dorothy. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm not even gonna cap, I'm not even gonna say it, but I got something totally different out of this movie and I just wanted to know if there was anybody else in the world who felt the same as I did. So we have Diana Ross the boss playing uh, Dorothy the main character and we have none other than my husband in my head when I was much younger. Sorry Cody, that's my current husband. But when I was younger I really thought I was going to marry Michael Jackson and and when you watch this movie for great reason like who I mean Michael Jackson in this movie literally completely everybody in this movie Nipsey Russell um who is the gentleman that plays the Tin Man I mean the um Cowardly Lion um I'm gonna go ahead and say his name is hey Google who plays the Cowardly Lion in The Wiz Theodore Ross Roberts according to Wikipedia <laughs> Theodore Ross Roberts, known as Ted Ross, was an American actor who was probably best known for his role as the Lion in The Wiz, an all-African-American reinterpretation of The Wizard of Oz. Let me just let Google tell y'all because Google knows better than me, Ted Ross. Okay, so this movie, I want to say it probably took place in the 80s. The choreography, let's just rave over the obvious things. The choreography, the costuming. I think I had a teacher in middle school, Miss Jones, that told me that she was in that movie. Shout out to um, Whitney Houston Academy. If anybody knows Miss Jones, was it Miss Jones at Whitney Houston? Yes, it was Miss Jones from Whitney Houston Academy um, in 2000, I want to say four to 2008. You guys know Miss Jones. She definitely told us that she was in the Wiz movie. If you guys have Miss Jones and that's where you went to Winnie Houston Academy, you know this movie is iconic. I mean, first of all, the poppy love scene with them and the, so let me just go back. So the premise of the movie is pretty much, it takes place in New York City. Diana Ross plays Dorothy, a young teen. I wanna say she's probably in her late teens, early twenties. And it is around Christmas time and she lives with her aunt Em. And it's very similar to the original Wizard of Oz. And Aunt M is hosting her annual, or it looks like her family event for Christmas. And Aunt M has, I mean, and they live in a town, in a, in a brownstone townhome. 
in New York City and this is the biggest townhome uh, brownstone that I've seen personally. I know that it can get pretty pretty big and I always wanted to if I was to be bi-coastal in my head I'd have a brownstone in New York and I'd have a nice beach home in the west coast in California and then I'd have me a nice farm slash ranch estate in the south where I live now. Pushing that into the universe, pushing that out into the universe. Anyway, so Dorothy is, um, so Aunt Em is hosting her annual Christmas gathering and Dorothy is trying her best to help Aunt Em and is, you know, seems a little troubled because you can tell everybody else has moved on and is starting their lives and Dorothy is having a little bit of trouble leaving the homestead. And, um, you know, I, when I watched this when I was a child, I never really realized that about Dorothy. I always thought that Dorothy just lived there and it was just a normal party. I never really took any of the context into consideration um, because as you can see, everybody was awaiting one of Dorothy's relatives and I don't believe it was her sister because I didn't see them embrace, but it very much well could have been because sometimes family, you know, when you guys get stuff going on, it's kind of hard, you know. <laughs> Anyway, but um, Dorothy was just, you know, not happy to be around family and to have people asking her about her life and to have people inquiring about, like, why she's still at home, why she hasn't, you know, jumped off the porch. Those of you who are from the East Coast, you guys know what that means. Jumped off the porch or is a terminology for people who refuse to leave home, for children who refuse to leave home. And you could tell it was she was very afraid of the big bad world out there. And she just, you know, tried to hide behind helping Aunt M and everything. And Toto, of course, is in this movie. And Toto decides to switch it all up after Aunt M gives this beautiful song about knowing that home is always here for you no matter what you got going on no matter what life may bring you the love that I instill in you will carry you throughout your years to know that no matter whatever happens you will always have the love and support oh my god that is just like priceless to know that you can just fail and you'll have a great you know support system that will be there to lift you up instead of making you feel like <laughs> the loser of the year you know that really is a treasure I'd say but anyway so Dorothy you know Aunt Emma's just singing this beautiful song to everyone and Dorothy's kind of you know trying to hide and hide and go smaller and then she finds a way to disappear because she's just like oh my god this cake let me go ahead and get this cake out even though they just started carving the ham they just started carving the turkey nobody has even I don't think put a fork into the food yet but Dorothy is already over the moment so she's like let me just go and get this cake because I just need a reason to leave out. And so with her leaving out, Toto decides that he wanted to bust out too. So Toto just, you know, scurries on outside into the blizzard. And now this blizzard brings me back because I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. And whoo, winters were rough. Winters were rough. They still are rough. But winters was rough growing up. Man, it's like... Lord, my little bones, my little southern, you know, bones have been accumulated to this nice, good um, mock winter, if you will. And, ooh, I don't think I could ever withstand that. But anyway, so Toto decided that he wanted to go outside and eat some snow. So Toto runs outside and Dorothy, you know, because that is her one, I want to say the way I viewed it was that's her one business in life is to take care of that dog. So she's going to go get her dog. Because it's cold and she don't want an ice dog, a popsicle dog. So she runs outside to go get her dog. And then all of a sudden it starts flurrying and snowing and all sorts of things, what have you. My TV's trying to turn off. All sorts of things, what have you. And then she turns around and there is that, you know, tornado, that famous tornado from the Wizard of Oz franchise comes towards her. And then she is swept into a whole a bliss. And she falls and then all of a sudden she's somewhere that she's never been and it definitely is not the bronx or brooklyn or none of the five boroughs anymore she is somewhere else but the whole course of you know she it, it seems like the course action from the beginning was that she thought in her real life that she wasn't enough that there was something that made her feel insecure about her life and the way that in in her you know her place in the world and the place that she took in her family and just in life and she didn't even have to do anything 
really to come into this new world and be completely praised, be the savior, be the hero, be exactly what they've been waiting for. And she didn't even know she did anything. She just like showed up, fell on somebody and saved an entire town. I mean, like destiny, no matter what you do, what is for you is for you. So anyway, you know, she crushes, you know, Evermean, the evil wicked witch of the East and frees all the munchkins. Miss Swan, the, the nice witch of the North, comes from up in the sky and it rains down and tells her that the Wiz is the one that can help her get home because of course Dorothy is like you know this isn't the world that she wants she's just like what I want to go back to what I know because I don't know anything here even though everybody is praising her even though everybody is treating her like she is just everything and more she is just like completely scared and like no I need to go back home because she got used to feeling small and that's what I got out of it so we continue on meeting and you know of course the introduction of the yellow brick road comes and she scurries on along and comes upon one of my favorites one of my favorite scenes in this movie is the scene with michael the introduction of the scarecrow character i mean michael jackson's voice y'all you can win child you can't break even can't give out of the game you know what i mean like so much better in so many different ways but oh my god like michael jackson i can't i'm not gonna cry in this video because i was already crying when i was watching this movie just because of my love for him and y'all i'm sensitive because he the michael jackson estate won its case and I just, you know, all the feels about Michael Jackson have just been so crazy. But to see him in this movie, y'all. Anyway, Michael Jackson comes in and sings and like is completely like the whole trajectory of the movie completely reinforces itself in the sense of Michael Jackson's character, the Scarecrow, could walk. He could sing. He could dance. But he did not know that. That he could do any of those things because he was surrounded by crows now i know that in history the crows um were symbol symbolic to the menstrual shows back in the days um which that they had before um you know in the back in the segregated times uh, menstrual shows were very popular a form of entertainment and a lot of the times black people were portrayed as crows <laughs> in a famous cartoons, famous movies. Um, if you've ever seen the movie with Damon Wayans called, so if you guys have ever seen the movie Bamboozled, you guys are a little bit familiarized with that is in modern times, but we see so many examples of blackface and, and fishing, especially in YouTube and just tutorials and all sorts of things, but that's neither here nor there. We're not, we're gonna leave the ignorance over to the side and we're gonna get back on the course because we're teaching the next generation about The Wiz and it's and the importance of this movie, The Wiz. So anyway, Michael Jackson's character, I keep saying Michael Jackson, because it really is like you really do embody the characters that you portray. I'm sorry, there is some humanity in that role for him because they didn't choose michael jackson by accident anyway michael jackson's character the scarecrow believed that he couldn't do any of the things that that he wanted to do that he dreamed in his mind that he knew he could do in his heart he didn't think he was anything he he thought he was nothing but garbage and his only duty was to stand on that their pole and he was told that perpetually by these crows and it took you know, Dorothy, someone who herself needed to see that, to come along and to free Michael Jackson from his their gardenist prison and free him from the naysayers and get rid of all the bad voices in his head and all the crows in his mind. And once he had a little bit, an ounce of encouragement, he was dancing like you wouldn't believe. He could walk like you wouldn't believe. He could talk, he could think of things and you know, the whole premise of the movie is following the yellow brick road and looking for the Wiz and the Wiz will be the one to save you. But you start to realize as an adult watching this movie that everything that they're looking for, they kind of already possess. So we continue on down the yellow brick road. There's a great song, a famous song that everybody knows. Come on now, it's on down, it's on down the road. Come on now, it's on down, it's on down the road. Don't you, 
you know that famous song guys so that song plays and they go on down the road and they ease on down to a theme park and so i feel like this is all symbolic because these are all the things inside of dorothy embodied in other creatures or other figments of her imagination it's not very clear whether she hallucinated this maybe she bumped her head because we know in the wizard of oz movie dorothy fell and bumped her head and when she came to she realized that everybody that she dreamt of in her dream in the in the land of oz were real characters but i'm believing it's it's in my business to think that maybe these were all parts of dorothy that she didn't know that she possessed but she projected them into the bodies of other things and she as she further went down the brick road into her life and dug further into herself she realizes all the things that she need she possessed so that further goes so they're a pearl up to um an amusement park and they find the tin man and the tin man has his you know song they figure out you know the tin man needs a heart and he can't feel and he's lived a life Oh my gosh, this movie teaches you about narcissism. It teaches you about feelings, emotions, and what empathy is, unconditional love, kindness. These are all the things that I got from this movie. And I wish to God that I could implement these more into my life. But unfortunately, it takes two. It takes two people. But, you know, knowing, the, know, as an adult, knowing this, I'm so glad that I watched this again. So... They find out that the Tin Man doesn't have a heart and, um, you know, they agree that, you know, all you have to do is come with us to the wizard because there's this external creature that's going to give us everything that we want to possess in our lives that we feel will make us better. So they have this song rendition and, of course, they stumble upon um, and Nipsey Russell plays um, the Tin Man, Nipsey Russell, famous dancer, singer um, from the 80s. Um, very very popular in the dance world and the entertainment world just in a whole Broadway in a whole and then um, after they beat whatever it is that was going on with the Tin Man they rescue him from his um, hell of the arcade or the amusement park and free him from his love which he you know suffered because he couldn't feel he was never able to empathize with the people who he caused harm to which it seems very strange because if he was so heartless how was he able to you know appreciate and respect and make friends with you know the scarecrow and dorothy i don't know that that's very strange so it all goes into already possessing these things and so finally what really was the aha moment for me was when they stumbled upon the lion now the cowardly lion Fleetwood, if you will, is an iconic character because the lion is the king of the jungle. The lion is possessed to be the top of the food chain, the head honcho, the big kahuna, but knocked off of his roster by little old Toto, he proved himself to be a cowardly lion, a cowardly lion. And it makes you feel, it makes you think about all the bullies or all of the mean people that possess themselves or present themselves to be this you know um you know all fearing you know just intimidating creature all masquerading real feelings and real vulnerability under there and it's it takes love and gentleness of dorothy to unravel that for the lion and give him a place to belong give him a new place to roam and not necessarily be if you will i guess the king of the jungle but one of the gang an intricate part of a group of people a niche a family and that he can still possess all of these things that he has but it's all a puzzle piece it's not an entire piece there's other pieces that mode and so of course you go through um after that they learn to work together because they run into you know um a mischievous man and his little puppets that he puppetrates which is all you know minions of um uh, eveline the wicked witch of the west who is ever mean sister and it all ties in the scenes come so now the fashion so then we all stumble after they beat the you know the evilness and they all come to and they realize 
that it is them who possess everything that they need to get them on the road that they they chose they choose to live the life that they know that they can live and to be who they know that they can be and it's all about encouragement from then on and love overcoming and oh my gosh so they beat out being put you know taken over by toxic perfume that you know they find that Dorothy is is loved and that Dorothy is enough in this world and it helps her to see that and it helps her to want to and reinforce her to want to go home and to change and so they finally get to you know the whiz and they realize that the whiz isn't even who he says he is everybody's portraying a character everybody's wearing a mask with love and encouragement could those masks be lifted or are some people just completely convinced on being unlovable boisterous and rude for the rest of their lives i mean it really is a commentary on human anatomy and relationships and i don't know guys i don't i got so much from this and i don't know maybe it's because i'm at a different place in my life that i was able to see it that way and i'm always finding you know that's that aha moment in movies that i watch as an adult person that i've loved as a child and it's it's an, it's interesting to see because it's it when you live a little bit and you have a little bit of experience under your belt, you start to, with life just in general, failing and picking yourself up and getting back up again, it teaches you to find the beauty in everything that built you because I can say my life has not been a crystal stair, but I wouldn't change one piece of it because for fear of not being able to make it to this moment to share with you all what I've learned and try to tap on the minds of someone else who may be feeling the same way. I don't know, guys. I've got my tissue here because, you know, I was getting emotional I was, as I was watching this movie. And I, the older I get, the more less ashamed I am of my emotions. And it's my superpower. It's my, it's my strength. And I'm glad I'm able to feel. I'm glad I have a heart. I'm glad I'm able to empathize because it makes me feel less alone. It must be pretty, you know, difficult holding up, you know, a persona of not needing anybody. But, you know, at the end of the movie, Dorothy ended up saving everyone. And she thought that she needed the one, she was the one to be saved or that she wasn't good enough. But who knew bumping your head <laughs> would bring you to your senses? Who knew that? And I, the ending song, If You Believe in Yourself, Lena Horne just had me enveloped in tears because it just reinforced that you don't need anybody to tell you who you are or what you're capable of. All you need to do, you two people, is believe in yourself for real. Like, believe in yourself, period. Like, believe in yourself. That's it. Believe in your failures. Believe in your wins believe in your choices i mean just live because all you gotta do is ease on down the yellow brick road like don't you carry nothing that might be a load don't you carry any burdens of regret or worries or fears fall down the road like the scarecrow fall down stumble down just get down the road like i really like am testifying in this moment and i know i'm gonna talk i'm gonna reach somebody with this i really I don't know I needed I needed to watch this movie I needed this reinforcement today I hope you guys um you know understand and feel if you guys think the same or if you have similar feelings about this movie or you just love the Wiz, go ahead and leave you know in the comment down below the ending scene <laughs> is the boss i don't know guys i didn't really want to hold you guys up too long because my previous movie review was like an hour and 15 minutes so i really just wanted to chop it up because i'm talking to the people who i know have seen the movie already and if you haven't seen 
The Wiz in a long time, my advice to you is to watch it again. If it's one of your favorites, legit watch it again and see what you get out of it this time because I'm sure the next time I watch it, I'll get something out of it because I've seen this movie over 10 times in my life and I've never watched it like I've had before tonight or today. I never have. And I'm really, really moved and grateful because it was movies like this that encouraged me to be an actress. And I will never, ever regret that time in my life when I pursued my dreams because it showed that I cared about myself that much. Like I, I It showed that I, when I put my mind to something that I could do anything, even, you know, entertain 28 people on YouTube. It's not a lot of people, but if you put 20 people in a room, that's a lot of people in the room. So I'm just grateful. I'm learning so much with YouTube. I'm learning so much recording videos and um, learning as I teach you guys about things. And I'm hoping that I'm pushing out good content and something that you guys can really relate to. Um, this is just one of my, like, I guess, character videos, just so you guys can get to know me um, outside of the crafter. Every time I try to do a crochet and chill video, I never get to actually crochet and talk to you guys. So one day I'm going to learn to do that. <laughs> I'm just so passionate and wanting to, I guess, make sure this video does not run too long. So I can only use so much of my brain at a time. But watch The Wiz. It's on Roku right now. If you guys have a Roku channel app, watch it. Just watch it. If you don't, just find it online and just watch it. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your adult self to watch this movie. I don't know, guys. If you aren't already, please subscribe because subscribing to my channel gives me the ultimate opportunity to grow this channel and to reach more viewers and to reach more people and to touch more lives and pass on positivity vibes to as many people as I possibly can. And if you hit the like button because you like this content, it shows me that I should make more content like this and I should keep putting out more stuff like this. So either way, you know, some kind of interaction is always appreciated. Uh, as always, my name is Caddy and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Don't miss out guys. And as always, be well. Bye-bye.